for more Gamer Hour with more of me, your host, Chris Puckett. As always, we're in Times Square, New York City at Reuters Studio. And as always, you're going to see my video game skills be put to the test. And by skills, I mean running away, getting to the next circle, letting the storm do the rest. <laughs> in tonight's show, I get sniped. You got sniped out of the sky again? Yeah, yeah, there's snipers everywhere, dude. Crazy. My guest tells us who the GOAT in the NFL really is. Best NFL player, period. And together, we survived the gulag. <laughs> yeah. Um, but before you get to see that chaos ensue, we gotta talk about the stupid decisions that publishers are making around the world. Apparently, EA isn't feeling the need for speed. The next Need for Speed title doesn't have a release date, and that's because the in-house group Criterion behind the game is working on another project. That's right, DICE is getting a helping hand from a race dev to pump out Battlefield 6. Now, I know I'm personally worried about the gunplay, but I think we're all excited to see some tanks do the Tokyo Drift. <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Online is getting its own standalone release from the base game. Red Dead Redemption 2 got the identical treatment recently, which significantly boosted the game's player count, which is normally great. The same is now expected with GTA, which really isn't that great because the last thing I want in my games is more fresh noobs ruining our highly coordinated heist. I start running up to him. He cannot shoot. Oh my god, he took a little stumble. <laughs> Look at him. Uh, they say never to kick a man when he's down, but... I couldn't. I just couldn't. I had to do it. Elite Dangerous's Odyssey expansion is getting an alpha release this month, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the Space Sim expansion comes out on the 29th, and the latest trailer revealed a co-op space mission of sieging an intergalactic outpost. Now, while the game still looks pretty rough, it's actually coming out, which is more than I can say for this game. <laughs> Destruction Sim Teardown received Steam Workshop backing. The game now has over 100 different mods involving new weapons, tools, missions, and you betcha, destruction. Teardown is known for destruction in every imaginable way possible, which makes me think, if there's any developer that should be helping dice with Battlefield, it's these guys. <laughs> The Outriders demo hit over 2 million downloads since launching on February 25th. Yeah, well done. The co-op looter shooter gives players a taste for what to expect with the full launch and has been received pretty well despite the game crashing when opening doors or jumping over small gaps. Yeah, they definitely need to get this one fixed. Can you imagine double jumping across a ledge to a save checkpoint and the game just crashes on you? Well, yeah, you can. You play Destiny, right? <laughs> The latest generation of Xbox wireless controllers have been experiencing an issue where input is not being registered when pressing a button, which is a major freaking problem. Microsoft is searching for a fix and is determining if the problem is hardware, software, or network based. The unresponsive input is affecting both Xbox and PC gamers, which upon hearing the news, PlayStation immediately announced they would be open up crossplay tournaments with Microsoft. <laughs> And finally, Ubisoft is bringing new content to Division 2, but I don't think anyone cares because we all stopped playing it in 2020. <laughs> what we do care about, though, is our guest tonight. He's the deep threat wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, the man who could outrun a cheetah in a 100-meter dash, the one, the only, Marquez Valdez-Scantley. Marquez, thanks so much for being here, man. Excited to have you on the show tonight. I'm excited to be here, man. Let's let's do it. I love it. All right, first off, we got to talk about these shirts. I love the Looney Tunes you got going on on the T-shirt. But what are these jerseys behind you? Uh, yeah, you know, I got a couple of my my friends. I got a good collection behind me. Um, on the other side, you can't really see them uh, in the camera view, but you know, some old teammates, some guys that I played football with or you know grew up with. Um, you know, I got them. Got them on the wall, you know, just, uh, you know, some swaps that I did throughout the years I've been playing in the league. 
Do you trade jerseys every game, or how many jerseys do you have in your collection now? Uh, not every game. It's just guys, that, like I said, I've played with or grown up with. I've uh, got probably about uh, 14 in my collection. Talking about guys that you've played with, you play with one of the great quarterbacks in the league. I've been watching your highlights. As a Cowboys fan, I've been on the, the receiving end of a few of your highlights. <laughs> Let's talk about playing with Aaron Rodgers. What is it like to catch bombs from this man? Um, it's great. I actually got his jersey um, right there um, behind me. Um, but, you know, just having a, a Hall of Fame quarterback, you know, under center, you couldn't ask for a better guy, literally the best quarterback to ever throw a football. Um, and I'm fortunate enough to have him be in mind. You know, I've grown up watching him play, um, which is crazy to say, but um, being able to come in and still catch passes from him, you know, years down the road, I've been watching him on Sunday night football. Um, you know, it's just a dream come true. That's pretty nutty stuff. I got to ask, what are the comms like, though? I I've heard you on stream. I've seen you in game. But what is it like on the field? Do you ever call for the ball in the huddle or does he just give you the nod and you know to start sprinting? Um, both. You know, there's times I'm like, yo, 12, throw me the ball. You know, I, I like this play. Or I think I had one against uh, Jacksonville. Um, it was like an 80-yard touchdown. Um, and I was like, the, the play before I told him, you know, uh, you know, throw me this ball. I can run by this guy. And then the very next play, we came out um, in the second quarter and he threw me one down the sideline uh, for 80 yards. So, you know, just one of those things where, you know, he has his moments where he's like, hey, Quiz, I want you to run this route. I'm throwing you the ball. Or I say, yo, 12, you know, throw me the ball. You know, I like this matchup. And, you know, we go from there. You guys make it work, and you've made it work at least six times when you finished in the end zone last season. I have to ask, was any one of those touchdowns more meaningful than the others? What was your favorite score of the year? Um, probably the one in the NFC Championship game against the Bucks. You know, even though we even though we fell up a little short, um, you know, in that championship game, uh, playing against the hometown team. You know, I've grown up a Bucks fan. I'm from St. Petersburg, Florida. You know, which is 30 minutes from Tampa. You know, I've always been a Bucks fan. You know, so anytime they're playing, I'm rooting for them unless they're playing against us. Uh, so you know, just playing against them and being able to go out and and score to try to help our team. You know, it was just a big thing for me. One of the best games of the year, without a doubt. Now, Marquez, you are more than just a football player, though. You're a business owner, a real estate investor, church volunteer, sneaker collector, and a chef. How does a man who is so busy manage to juggle all of this? What motivates you to stay so busy? Um, you know, obviously, I don't just play football, you know, all day and all night. You know, I go to work just like anybody else. And then when they come home, they have hobbies. Um, and, you know, my hobbies, I want to have them make money eventually. Um, so that's kind of the, the goal, you know, make my hobbies, you know, earn some revenue. Um, and that's kind of, you know, the mindset that I have, learn that from my parents. And, um, you know, do the thing that you love to do and make some money off of it. You're a smart man. I spent all my money at the bars when I was young. Uh, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about your shoe collection here with the sneakers. I see your jerseys behind you. Do you have a favorite set of sneakers, though? Um, I don't have a favorite set. I mean, probably um, Air Jordan is a favorite brand. Um, I'm sponsored by Nike, uh, but I think Air Jordan ones are, you know, the my favorite shoe at this at the moment right now. I just caught another L trying to pick up some shoes this week. What is the one <laughs> shoe that has been out of your grasp the whole time? What's your dream shoe? Uh, I don't really have a dream shoe. I could pretty much get whatever shoe I want. It just kind of depends on how much money I want to spend on it. There you um, go. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I think, I mean, like I said, I can pretty much get any shoe. I haven't really been, you know, denied of a shoe yet um, that I couldn't get my hands on that I didn't want. So. You mentioned on your Instagram that you like cooking. So I'm a grill master. I'm all about doing ribeyes, maybe some barbecue ribs. What is your go-to entree in the kitchen? Uh, whatever I feel like cooking, to be honest. Um, I've learned how to cook from my parents and my grandparents. They taught me, you know, a lot of things. And I've did my own, you know, learning and tweaking over the years. Um, so I can pretty much cook anything. Um, and if I can't cook it, I'll find out how to cook it. So, you know, it's been, I don't really have a go-to meal. It's more so what I'm in the mood for today. What's the best thing you could cook for your family? Say it's a holiday. You're getting everyone together. What are you bringing out? Um, I mean, I can really cook good Thanksgiving food. So anything that um, goes on for Thanksgiving food, um, that's usually the time when all the family gets together, um, especially with everybody being in different places and me being in Green Bay, Wisconsin. 
um, when we all get together for Thanksgiving, if they come up, you know, to, to uh, Wisconsin for the holidays, you know, I can cook a good meal. So I don't really, like I said, it can be anything. Um, just depends on what I'm in the mood to cook. But I think Thanksgiving food is probably the, the best thing to cook for a group of people. Speaking of Green Bay, it's the smallest of any of the NFL cities, and it's not necessarily known for its Michelin star restaurants, but every NFL city has good food. Where's the place to eat in Wisconsin? Uh, probably Lambeau Field, man. We have some really good chefs that pair us food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, you know, so we eat some really good food three times a day. Um, and I think that's the best place you can get food where it's going to be good food and healthy. I like that. And what is the celebration meal? Say you guys come off a huge win. What are you feasting on? Um, well, with this year, they had our facility shut down um, for Mondays and Tuesdays after games. So we couldn't even go in there and have victory meals. So. We'll get back to that. It's coming soon. The vaccines are going out already. Let's talk a little bit about your game inside because I was first introduced to your gameplay in a war zone tournament that I was commentating. But I had no idea you were this into competitive gaming. You have your own esports org now. What is TMG? Um, Trench Made Gaming, uh, e esports team that I created with Sub Nation. We partnered up a few weeks back. Um, we've been getting it rolling. Um, and it's just. Like you said, it's a esports team. Um, I think the the name holds true to you know who I am as a person and everything that I had to battle through in life to to get to where I'm at. You know, battling through those trenches, back against the wall, fighting through adverse situations. Um, you know, so I think that's just who I am, and I think that's the perfect name for TMG. I love that. And you're not the only wide receiver now with an esports org. We also got Juju Smith Schuster from uh, Pittsburgh with Team Diversity. When are you two facing off against each other? Um, we haven't get, talked about it that uh, in that capacity just yet. But, um, you know, I think that'll be something that'll be dope to, to have on down the road, especially with, um, you know, the NFL getting behind esports um, and just the world getting behind esports. I think it's going to be something that's really cool. And for more athletes to be involved in sports or in esports, I think it's a great bridge, you know, from the sports side to the esports side um, because video gamers – Love talking to athletes. Athletes love playing video games. Um, so I think it's the perfect way to bridge this gap um, and be able to get guys involved into it. It's so awesome. I mean, Roger Saffold, he got into it back when I was working on Call of Duty with his first team. Um, now we see Juju. We see so many more players getting into it. Was this someone in, like, the Players Association telling you about the world of esports, and did, or did you find this on your own? No, nah, I've always been in um, – just super involved in video games. I've loved video games forever since I was a little kid. Um, and so just playing these games, and I've always been like, man, I want to be a part of an esports team. Um, and then as I got older, I'm like, man, I can have my own. You know, and then uh, um, being a professional athlete, you know, I have a lot of connections. I play with a lot of different people who play on the esports team. Um, and being able to find the perfect partner with Sub Nation, I was able to get it done relatively quickly. Love to see it. So let's talk about where you started in gaming to get you hooked. What was that game that you could not put down? Um, man, I think the first game that I was just like fell in love with probably was NFL Street or NBA Street. Those two games I just love playing. Um, I love those games. I hate that they stopped making them. Um, and then obviously NCAA. I always loved all three of those games. So just having those games that I could play and get super involved in. Um, and then as I got older, I played more Call of Duty games and got into more, you know, first person shooting games. Um, but those were the games that when I was a kid, I loved playing. Were you always the best out of your friends group at video games? Or when did you find out, oh, I could compete in Call of Duty tournaments? Um, I've always been the best out of, out of my friends group um, that I grew up playing with. You know, I love to compete. I think that's just the athlete that's inside of me. It's just being a true competitor. So, you know, if I did lose, you know, I'm, I'm upset about it. I want to, you know, play again. Let's do it. I got to win. Um, and so that just kind of drove me to want to get better at video games. And then when I started playing with other guys who were better than me at video games, because they took it as their profession, you know, it made me just want to get better. Um, and so over the last, you know, two years since I've been playing, you know, or three years I've been playing Fortnite and, and Warzone, um, I've seen people who are better than me at the game. And, you know, I hated that. So just like, man, I got to get better. I want to play. Um, and I kind of just took it from there. I love winning, but I hate losing. I feel you right there. With all the traveling you do, do you manage to still squeeze some gaming in on the road? Or are you bringing your console or a laptop with you? 
Um, when I'm traveling, no, but when I'm, you know, stationary, like when I'm in my house here in Florida or if I'm in Green Bay, I always have my setups with me. But if I'm gone for, you know, a weekend or something, then I'll leave the game at home. Uh, you know, I can put it down for a little bit. Marquez, tell me a little bit about the gaming setup because you seem to have one of the better man caves that we've seen on this show. Yeah, I mean, I got, you know, two full PCs, uh, two monitors, you know, great uh, mic, headset, you know, I uh, got a sponsorship with uh, Battle Beaver, you know, one of the greatest controllers out there, custom made Battle Beaver. So I got all kinds of stuff, man. Um, you know, and obviously I got all my all my stuff in my little man cave back here with the, the paintings and the, the jerseys and whatnot. Um, so, you know, just if you're going to compete, you got to have the best stuff. Um, and why limit yourself? I love that you got the two PCs set up there for streaming. And we asked you before the show, who was your favorite streamer on Twitch? You said yourself. So do you yeah. watch your own VODs or do you have to catch the show live? No, nah, I don't watch my own VODs. Um, no, I'm living in it. Uh, but, you know, I, like I said, I enjoy playing this game. Um, and, you know, that's just something that I love being able to let fans interact, especially with this year, with them not being able to come to games or come to training camp. Um, it gives them a, a outlet to be able to come in and interact and learn about, you know, their favorite athlete, um, you know, on a face to face, you know, basis or a camera to phone basis. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> same thing is being able to, you know, interact with these, you know, fans or friends or whatever. Um, in a space where people can't, you know, be close to one another in this time frame. So I think it just gives them the perfect opportunity to be able to go out and meet their favorite athletes. So I love when athletes stream um, because I think it gives, you know, them the opportunity to engage with their fans. Well, speaking of the fans in the community, we opened up the questions to our community as always. And the first question we have tonight is from Albino Thunder, who wants to know, who is the second fastest player on the team? Uh... I don't really know who the second fastest player on the team is. I just know I'm first, and I really look behind to see who came. There you second, go. So. <laughs> <laughs> Quite in the first place. That's all that matters. Robin Hoods wants to know, what esports titles will TMG enter into in the future? Um, the, the sky's the limit. Um, obviously, you know, we're going to start with Warzone. Um, but, you know, as big as we can get this thing is, is our goal. So if we can compete in every type of game, then you know, that's where we want to go with it. Um, obviously... You know, with us being a, a startup company, we're going to be limited into the things that we can do um, within the first, you know, few weeks of the, the organization being up and running. But um, like I said, we want to grow this thing. Um, we don't want to just limit it to one game. I like that. Jay Wong wants to know best wide receiver from the NFL of all time. Um, best wide receiver from the NFL of all time. Uh, that's a tough question, um, but uh I have to go with the OG Randy. OG Randy Moss. I, I have to agree with that one there. Follow-up question from Jay Wong. Best NFL player, period. Uh, Aaron Rodgers. He literally just won the most valuable player. So Take that, Tom Brady. All right. <laughs> this last one is from me. Who is the best Warzone player in the NFL? Me. No question. Well, Marquez, that is great news because I am going to need your big backpack. It's time to dial in your mouse, DPR. Strap on that headset. It's game time, buddy. Marquez, before we drop into the game of Warzone, our producer Travis has presented us with a challenge. The challenge for tonight is for us to not only come out with a W, but to get at least 10 kills between the two of us. You think we can pull that off? I think we can get it done. I think All we right. can get it done. I like that. Well, you get eight. I'll clean up the other two, and hopefully we'll get the dub somehow. Now, I got to be honest. I haven't played this in, like, five weeks. Is Superstore still the hot drop? Uh, yeah, Superstore is still the place to go. All right, well, that's where we're headed. Let's get into it. It's game time right now, baby. I see MVS going for some aerial combat over there. All right. <laughs> you dropping shields, Marquez? Yeah. Oh, I broke my legs already, David. <laughs> I got you. Oh, the cocky drop. You got sniped out of the sky again? Yeah, yeah, there's snipers everywhere, dude. It's crazy. No one's just assault rifle. It's a legendary. You gotta have it. Not seeing anybody here. 
the buy station here. I'm running to you. I'm buying armor plates. Yeah, I think we have to drop super. Got, load up. got me some cash up. Oh. All right. We got a got car in front it. of us. Oh, I dropped my big gun for the bad gun. Under fire here. One on us here at the tanks. Yeah, three kill, uh, four kills total right now. All right, passenger. We're a powerhouse squad. Bounty contract here. I'll take it. Positive ID on the bounty target. Sort them out. All right. Is at the buy station? Go for it, boys. Ah, uh, he's he. Uh, I should have stayed in the car. They they they're uh, going towards hospital. They're in they're they're in this house. Oh, there there he is. First floor. Four back passes. Hello? Oh. Airstrike. I just walked right back. I have to have walk right No. <laughs> oh, creeps in the shower. Weirdos. All right. All right, let's go. I believe in us. What are we sitting on? How many total? Just five. Just five. You lose that, Dave? No, I won it. We're good. Oh, yeah. Good man, good man. All right, get some cash. Let's get MVS back in the building. Is anyone still messing with the Krieger? Not really. Uh, not for Warzone. Oh, I just got lit. I'm done in here. All right, Dave, no pressure. <laughs> I got a scav here if you want to stay in this, and uh, I can get you guys up real quick. Yeah, get MVS back in. Yo, Same Dave, us. I don't think you're going to survive this. No, I don't think so either. I'm getting <laughs> ripped right now. You don't need no plates. Look at you. Swift little legs. Pump cash, at least. There's a barber. There you go. Let's get it. Up on that. And we're gonna have to circle. We got plenty of time here in the bottom half of the map. I'm gonna be able to get you. Should be able to. Alright, let's go. I'll get you back. Alright, Marquez, tell me about this loadout. What are we running? Oh, David just got me back in. Uh, right now I got uh, Amex in my hand. Amex in the Mac 10. Axes. Oh, I'm, I'm getting ripped over here. Um, I'm done. Hey, we appreciate you bringing me back. <laughs> Running back to the buy zone. All right, then I'll get that load out. And then... It's going to be great. It's going to be the best restart to their game ever. Oh, yeah. We're at six kills. We need four more. How many plates come in an armor box? Eight. Or, or it just it fills you up. 
feeling good about it. Here, Chris, I'll take this. Upgrade my 10. Thanks, Daddy. What do you see over there, Marquez? Um, not much. Eyes on me. I'll grab right here if you want to want to go get him right here. Where is he at? Yeah. Green ping. Green dot. Okay, there's two guys in this yellow building that we're passing. Yeah, they're gonna be on the rooftop. Oh, uh, where are we going, MBS? Where are we going? I don't know, I got people on me, so I'm not We go in there, help them out. Yeah, no. that a boy. Just Train station? He's just cleansing. Yeah. Just like he jumped down to my left. Here he is. Got him. Oh, there's more on top, there's more on top, more on top. Is there an easy way up top? Oh, I see him top right. Got a boy. That's the white. All right, you got money? Maybe this guy drops something. 1,600. Yeah, I should've dropped money right here too. Right there. There's a buy. The kid to my left. Right over here. Marking waypoint. On top or below? Uh, Hyper. I don't know where you went. Shot. Just beard. The bounty, right. Enemy on me. Back right now. Objective is to eliminate the bounty target. Getting in the car. Yep, he's in. Oh, that's a good snipe. He's sniping. Can he drop? Enemy precision airstrike. Take cover. That's not good, Dave. Nah, I'm um, looks like I'm done. He's precisioning me. Oh no, I survived. We can get up here. You know you can drop off and survive, yeah? I'm no, there's there's this there's an ascend right here. They can't hit a moving target. We're good, Dave. Uh, good. I've got you. Stick Sir. it. All right, they're up on the hill. Yep. There's a sniper, so just watch. Where do we go now? I see a Tonkin truck. Car right here. D down them. Down them. Still confirm. Up top of the hill, MVS shooting rockets at you. Not sure why I'm getting rockets shot at me, but whatever. Oh god, I got no more angle. Oh, from that car, the car is shooting at me. He's behind me too. Time's up. Got one. Woo! Thanks, buddy! Let's go, they're in the trucks. I wish Save, I had more than 30 the vehicle. He's, he's, he's getting out. Can't run and reload at the same time. What kind of war is this? Disable. Nice job. Can't see this kid. I think he's right in front of you. That's a nice shot. Behind the wall, I see one to yeah. the left there. Right here. Broken armor. I literally can't see him. So deep. All right, one guy in front of green. Let's win it. Yeah, let's, let's get to the roof here. I think the there's a guy roof? up there though, so just watch. High ground. No, one shot right there. I need smart. Coming. Out. Oh, he doesn't have it up arm like Rogers. Right side of the roof as well. Tight right. 
It's super weak. Yeah. Right here too. Move it. Broke him. We're charging you. You're pushing him. You got crazy. Yeah, I like moving. that about you. Jump down. We're not out here. Regroup the safe zone. Did they nice. drop all the way down or what? Yeah, they're, they're dead. You found them? Well done, boys. Glad I could do nothing to help the team there. You guys look great. Eight people left. Let's keep this roof. MVS, we win in this? That's the plan. Rejoin the boys. Oh, that's a mine. Hey, yo. Oh, God. I got noob done. They're downstairs in our building. Um. Are they outside or inside he, the building? He's laying down inside. With, I believe it's gonna happen. So he's got my Mac 10 is really the only threat. Look. The rest of his gear is facing. Okay. Down by the green tents, running left here, Dave. Nice. There's another one down there. All right, three teams left, five people. I don't see, you see him? I don't see him. Nah, they're right underneath me though. One on the heartbeat, down to the left, Dave. He's on the first floor, dead. MVS is so good! Two v one. One more player. One more nerd to beat. MVS has got him in his sights. He's there it down. is. That's a dub. There we go. I can't tell you how many times that we've just come out of the gates and won a challenge right away. Marquez, thank you for the hard carry, buddy. Yeah, man, anytime. All right, well, our aggressive plays paid off, and we came out on top. So how you feeling about that chicken dinner? Was that expected for you? Yeah, man, it was light, man. Wasn't, wasn't too difficult. Had to battle back, but we got it done. I love it. Well, you dropped double digits. I only dropped four, but that was enough to complete our challenge. The only thing left to do is review and rating. All right, Marquez, you now have 583 wins in Warzone after that last game, so I need to get your true feelings about the Battle Royale. First off, what do you think of Season 2? What do you like, not like? What do you think can be improved from this point? Uh, I enjoy the game, obviously. You know, I play it all the time with my friends. Get out here and have fun competing. Uh, obviously, the dislike portion of it is dealing with hackers and cheaters, um, and every time there's a new update, there's some kind of air code being dropped on me every time. But other than that, I think the game's great. Uh, well, with that said, how would you score it 1 to 100? Where does it land? Um, I think it's about a 90 right now. 90? Okay, I like that. That's very close to me because I think the game's great. I mean, Warzone is currently the best BR out there on the market, right? But it's got some major moves to make later this year, in my opinion, if it wants to keep that title. The recent change in weapon meta has been nice. It's brought a little fresh life to the game, but it'll need more than just the guns to keep players enthralled. I think Verdansk needs to go. We need a new map. As soon as that second map comes out, I think people will be ultra pumped, and I will continue to feed families in Superstore until it does. <laughs> On a scale, though, of donuts to macaroons, I give this a New York City cheesecake. It's thick, 175 gigs to be exact, full of rich gameplay and smooth mechanics. Plus, the added cherry on top of all this, the newly added guns from Cold War gives it that satisfying finish on the palate. You like that answer? I love it. Love it. Are you, are you a cheesecake guy? I am. I actually love cheesecake, to be Perfect. honest. Well, you said it was a 90. New York City cheesecake on my scale is a 91. It's nearly the perfect dessert. Marquez, thanks so much for coming on the show tonight. And next time you're on, we're dropping 20 each. Sound fair? I love it. I'm all for it. Let me know when we want to do it again. Easy enough, 83. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Marquez Valdez Scantling. From scoring touchdowns to streaming, running an esports org, and volunteering in his community, MVS is doing it all. To stay up to date on his esports team, Trench Made Gaming, go to trenchmadegaming.gg. And to catch more of his Warzone dominance, go watch Marquez live on his Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash MVS underscore 11. While you're at it, follow the man on Twitter and Instagram, both handles also at MVS underscore 11. It's that time of the show for me to go home and play. 
Raft, yeah, it's like Minecraft, but you're stuck on a raft in the ocean and adults are playing it because COVID's still a thing. <laughs> you know where to find us. It's the usual suspects. Go to our YouTube, Twitch, or any of our other 50 plus streaming channels to watch the show and check in on our website, thegamerhour.com to see what surprises we have lined up for you in the coming weeks. If you're not already, do me a favor, follow us on our social media, do it right now, click that follow button on our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. From Reuters Studio in Times Square, New York City, I'm Chris Bucket. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now go work that circle like a hula hoop, and we'll catch you next week for another episode of The Gamer Hour.